numpad 7 or back quote and top to go to the top viewport. Tab to go to edit mode, G to move while holding control to snap to the grid like this. What we just did, was moving the mesh in edit mode without moving its origin. Control R to add loop cuts. We need 5 cuts in total. Select this face, turn on the proportional editing, and rotate it 45 degrees on the X axis. That's R, X, and 45, but we need to use the mouse wheel to increase the proportional editing tool's affected region. We need to rotate the rest of the faces. Let's undo R, X, 45 and use the mouse wheel to expand the proportional editing region. That looks good. Let's proportionally scale the selected face. Time to add the array modifier. Control 3 to subdivide. Right click and shade smooth to smooth the surface. Do you see how the rotated faces no longer show after we subdivided the mesh? We need more loop cuts if we want them to show up. Let's skip that part for now. Let's add the simple deform modifier. Looks like the end edges look too soft. Let's add some loop cuts to make them look sharper. I'll turn this object into a golden artifact. If we type S to scale, the object will break up because it's still linked to the array modifier. However, if we go to Tools, Transform, and only affect the origins, we'll be able to scale freely like this. Move the origin in the Y axis. Let's add a background plane. We can disable the affected only setting now. Let's type S to scale. I'll add the UV grid material. Let's drag this image into our node editor and link it. Please watch a tutorial listed in the description to match my final render settings, as I'm using a cloned look dev HDRI setting. Let's lower the HDRI strength. I'll show you how to add a spotlight like a pro.
This is how we would normally add a spotlight to the scene. We'd manually have to move and rotate, and that can be time consuming depending on the complexity of the scene. Now we have the spotlight nearly perfectly aligned with the camera. But would there be another way to add the spotlight like this? Also, if we increase the power, we'd still go around to angle the spotlight with difficulty and that can be time consuming as well. Let's delete the spotlight. I'll show you how the pros save time with a perfect spotlight setup procedure. Let's add a spotlight and go to options. What does this align view setting do? No matter what we're currently looking at, a new object will always be placed on the 3D cursor. Do you see how the spotlight looks rotated? Align view means the spotlight was created to align its angle with our current view angle. What if we press Shift S to move the 3D cursor to our camera? If we add the spotlight once again, the light will spawn in our camera. If we select Align View, the light will rotate to align with our current view. Does this mean if we use Numpad 0 to go into the camera view and align view, the spotlight will point at what the camera is currently looking at? Let's try just that. Do you see how fast that was? Now we have a spotlight perfectly aligned to shine an object the camera is focusing on. Let's remove the light, shift, C, to recenter the 3D cursor and try again from the beginning to see how fast this procedure is. Select the camera, and press shift, S, to move the 3D cursor there. Go into the camera view, add a spotlight with a line view. Think how much time we have saved, and will save in the future. However, this setup will still require a lot of work to angle it properly, if we were to rotate the light. Let's apply all modifiers, select the array object, and move the origin to geometry. Shift S to move the 3D cursor there, and let's add an empty object. We can select the spotlight, and use track to constraint to make it point the empty object no matter where it goes. Let's set up the light and render the scene.
Let's turn off use nodes under compositing. I'll also use 32 samples to render. This is the end of the tutorial. Please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed watching this tutorial. Thank you for watching.